Hey everybody, welcome to TIW Podcast. I'm Eric and today I watched a WWE NXT UK episode 50 and NXT episode 514, both broadcast on July 3rd, 2019. I'm recording this um, just a few days late, but I'm officially caught up. These are the most recent episodes that I could have watched at this time. So hopefully I can stay on top of it moving forward i'm also getting this episode out before uh monday night raw later this evening because i'm recording this on monday the 7th 8th 8th of july but um anyway um another uh great couple of episodes i took a lot of notes as it turns out but there's a lot of stuff that happened on nxt um but we'll start with nxt uk um uh Rhea comes out she's not supposed to come out at the beginning of this episode but she comes out and she wants Piper Niven right now and so they have a match um lots lots of great stuff yet again from both of them but uh, Piper Niven gets the win via a Piper driver and we'll see where things go from here is uh is is Rhea on the decline as far as uh dominance goes this could be the start of that uh, then we have Alexander Wolf make his in-ring debut for NXT UK versus Jack Stars, and I don't think anybody is surprised at all that Alexander Wolf destroys Jack Stars and gets the win there. Then we had Jazzy Gabbert in a handicap match versus is it da- Danny Lung and Mercedes Blaze, I think luna no luna <laughs> I, I put a little bit too long of a tail on that g that looks like it, it looks like lung luna makes a lot more sense as a name um jenny was there at ringside uh she didn't really need to get involved at all but she she just to show that she's there but jazzy just completely destroys both of these ladies and gets the win there uh backstage we have an interview with cassius ono he talks some crap about mandrews mark andrews um so i guess we're gonna get that match sometime pretty soon and then we have the uh uh, mustache mountain finally gets their rematch against the grizzled young veterans uh they have not fought them since the uh uh, the original crowning of the grizzled young veterans back in january at nxt takeover blackpool but um oh man this match uh is is pretty awesome uh but then it's interrupted like this would have been a fantastic match to to be the the uh i mean mustache mountain getting their their groove back or for grizzled young veterans to prove that yes that was a definitive win against mustache mountain before but neither thing can be proved because uh disqualify a disqualification comes so mustache mountain i believe uh technically won this match because imperium attacked them first let's see what would you do do, 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 do. what is that thing that i wrote Oh, uh, they they handcuffed uh, Trent Seven to the post as they were beating the crap out of um, Tyler Bate outside of the ring. It was just making him watch. Um, So anyway, uh, I don't think they actually did attack Grizzly. uh, Grizzly Young Veterans, I think, just got the heck out of there. But um, yeah, yeah, Imperium, just just this reign of terror from imperium i'm not sure if this is the last episode from the download festival um it might it might be um i don't think we've seen i don't remember but and i didn't take notes on what's going to happen next week but i'm looking forward to see what happens next week uh so uh yeah imperium i guess there's some controversy with walter doing something with the uk championship um, I saw a post about it. I didn't see actual video of the event. It was something with his opponent, like, walked over the champ, like, stepped on the championship or something like that. Um, so I I don't know if that will have any effect on things moving forward um, as, like, punishment or, or something like that. But I guess we'll see further down the line. 
Uh, that brings us to NXT episode 514. We open up with Aaliyah versus Mia Yim. Mia Yim, of course, wins that match. Like, it would have been really surprising if Aaliyah was able to win that. Uh, she wins via Protect Your Neck. And Mia says that she's coming to whoop that ass. Shayna, Shayna Baszler's ass. Uh, then we had Forgotten Sons complaining to Regal as Regal was trying to talk about um, he was being interviewed about what was he being interviewed about? Um, I don't even remember because Forgotten Sons they they interrupt and Regal says go to the back of the queue. You you messed up your opportunity. So next week we're gonna have the Street Profits versus Oni Lorcan and Danny Birch. Uh, then we had Adam, Adam Cole, uh, getting pizza from the Gar- Garganos, which is the, uh, the restaurant owned by his parents. Um, and he sneaks a photo of himself over onto the wall of fame where they have the very, the, the very proud pictures of, of Johnny and Candace over there. Um, <laughs> he points it out. He should have just not pointed it out at all because he just took it down immediately. It would, been, it's, it would have been better as a slow burn. It's like a week later, he finally realized, that, wait, what, what, what is this photo of Adam Cole doing here? Jerk. I think it is kind of funny. He was wearing a takeover shirt. So the, the, the shirt had just as many pictures of Adam Cole on it as of Johnny Gar- Gargano. <laughs> but anyway, uh, he, he got these pizzas for, for a bunch of wrestlers so that he could, motivate them to stop kidding themselves and just give up this the like the background music for this whole thing was like so like if it fit it it made the it it made the whole video like that much better because it was like oh no it seemed it was it seemed very serious it was like complete opposite of like a motivational type type of thing and i thought it was great it was that was probably my favorite thing from this whole week. Other well, no, I keep saying that and then remembering that I I, I say that without thinking about what's actually on the other shows from during the week, um, because uh, Raw was really good. But this, yeah, the, the this the the unmotivational speech or demotivational speech was was pretty great uh then we had Kushida versus uh a fella called jeff parker um this was not a part of the breaking out tournament um as jeff parker is uh, could have been part of that but uh Kushida won that match via a hoverboard lock um nothing really nothing really stood out to me about this match since it was just against just a guy um so it, it it wasn't didn't have that uh same excitement as Kushida versus Drew Gulai. But we had these like interviews about him, like talking about all the different brands. And you know, I think it it would be awesome to see him on every single one of those shows. Uh just going around challenging people. Um and he's a time traveler, so he could uh, he could challenge people before he even he could he could defeat people before he even challenges them and things like that. But uh, we'll see we'll see what we'll see what happens. Um, I mean, his matches against Drew Gulak were were awesome. So uh, hopefully, get more of him versus uh, some more top guys. Um, the uh, breakout tournament match: Isaiah Scott versus Cameron Grimes. Um, Oh, there's this one impressive move. Who who did the, I think it was Isaiah Scott who did this move. He like from the mat, his opponent was up on the post. From the mat, he leaped straight up and got his feet up to his opponent's head, and hit the Hurricane Rana off there. Or I don't know if it's a Franken or Hurricane Rana in that case. I think it's a Hurricane Rana. If it's your ankle, what is the difference? I feel like. The Frankensteiner is there uh, above your knees. Their head is above your knee. I don't know. Is that the actual difference? 
I should I should learn more. Uh, but yeah, that was that was pretty impressive. Um, so I I I think I was pretty surprised that uh, Cameron actually won that match, but you know they were both pretty good. Uh, let's see. Uh, Bianca Belair versus Zunica. Uh, Bianca just like beat the crap out of her, like t- throwing her around by her head and stuff, by her hair, in her head, and you know both, both her head and her hair. Um, so yeah, Bian- Bianca wants to just mess people up, and oh my god, uh, her, her just lifting. She's so freaking strong. She's so freaking strong. If, if I've mentioned this before, I talked about watching the combine. But just go and watch the combat. Like, just skip through all the parts that Bianca Belair just just skip to Bianca Belair doing stuff, and you'll see what a beast that she is. I'm sure there's like a highlights video of just her in the combine, but yeah, go look that up. That'll be a lot easier than fast forwarding through like I think it's like four hours, six hours. I don't even remember how long it is. It's at least four hours. The whole combine videos. Um, for this year but i hope they keep doing those every i know they'll keep doing the combine i hope they keep covering it like they do in here um also the whole thing is really worth it just to hear tegan knox on commentary the entire time um just because i mean she has a great voice um i enjoy her accent and she also has some great uh insight on to, to, to everything and there's a lot of really personality showing through with her talking about how, how she if she wasn't injured that she would be she would be winning everything and things like that and which sounds like it should be like a heel thing to say but she's i don't know she's just like really charming about it and yeah i I think it's worth worth it just for that, and, and also Tino Sabatelli is on there because he's injured at this time also, and he's saying the same kind of stuff, but it comes across much more as a uh, arrogant heel uh, type things because, uh, but he has this friendly rivalry with his uh, former tag team partner Riddick Moss, who is um, who just completely destroys ev- almost every every challenge in the combine. But, um, yeah, why do you get off track talking about the, the combine is awesome and I like it a lot more than like almost everything else on the network. Um, because it, it's also, it also feels a lot like big brother in a way. And I've talked about this before. It would be so awesome to see a season of big brother. That's just at the WWE performance center that they're there it's it's you know a group of like 10 12 wrestlers uh six men six women and they're like training the entire time uh, they have to also have occasional matches um i haven't i haven't really thought about this much yet but um how cool would that be they and then you just see them like hanging out or like recovering they have to relax they have to get they're like doing their stretches all that kind of stuff while they're just talking crap about each other behind their backs and things like that. And they have to vote each other off. And, uh, yeah, that would be so, so awesome. Um, like the wrestling, they would, it would be the wrestling matches, the, the wrestling matches, they would, they would just have them. Uh, so like that wouldn't be for the wins or the losses or whatever, because, uh, you know, that would put like a scripted element in, in, into, uh into their like voting and things like that but um it could be like combine type challenges that's what you get how you get immunity um how you're safe from getting voted off that kind of thing um and then the the, the actual wrestling matches would just be i i guess it could just completely tear down kayfabe for it that they have to like book they have to plan their own matches and talk it through and all that kind of stuff. And they have like certain elements that they have to put into the match and things like that. And then the rest of the housemates give, you know, thumbs up, thumbs down, that kind of thing. That could be pretty interesting. So you're like working together to do that kind of stuff. I don't know. I don't know. I just want to see a uh, big brother WWE performance center. It would be awesome. 
So make it make it happen, somebody, please. Um, and then our main event was Roderick Strong versus Tyler Breeze, in which Tyler Breeze is has his back absolutely murdered in about seven different ways, but the the main way was getting thrown right into the steel steps, like into the corner of it. it I don't. I don't know how he's not paralyzed. That's crazy. Um, but yeah, this match is awesome. And uh, But Roderick Strong wins via end of heartache after uh, Bobby Fish and, and uh, Kyle O'Reilly come out and provide a, a distraction that gives um, that gives Strong the, uh, the upper hand there. Um, so... Yeah, I, I talked so briefly about the main event, but so much about the idea of Big Brother WWE Performance Center. But um, yeah, I, I I am excited to see what happens next. Um, this coming week, it's the go home shows for uh, Extreme Rules. I'm going to Extreme Rules, so I am very excited for that. Um, I probably more excited than I would be if I wasn't. Um, so uh it, it's gonna be a, a an interesting week uh as i also have to to work some overnights and then uh go into a bunch of other shows um but i'll be talking about all of those um as the week progresses um some stuff that i'll be talking about and that i, I can probably recommend even before i actually see them to confirm that the recommend i, I would recommend them but um, Hugh Jackman has his uh, touring show, and I've heard that it's great, uh, but I'm seeing it in Denver here on Wednesday. Um, I'm really excited for that. And then uh, Friday and Saturday, I'm seeing Real Big Fish and Aquabats in concert in Kansas City and St. Louis, because for some reason they skipped over. Um, they completely skipped over. They, 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 sk- they skipped. They skipped. They, hmm. They completely skipped over Denver and maybe they it could have made sense to go I don't know if they did Salt Lake City or not it might have made more sense for me to see them in Salt Lake City if they were in Salt Lake City but I didn't go to do that but if they're still I could that's too much driving anyway um so I'm that and then I'm uh from St. Louis I'm flying to to Philadelphia to go to the uh, extreme rules um so that that'll be an interesting trip that then I'll, then i'll have to fly back and then drive home from there uh, but i may make a detour and uh see the blue devils in kansas um they are in el dorado kansas which is a little bit um a little bit south of topeka topeka to um so we'll see how all of that goes but i'm i'm really excited for all of it um since i'm not doing any conventions for a couple more weeks uh, i think the next one galactic swag expo is in three weeks um that's in arlington texas go check that out um i'm working on all kinds of new original arts original pieces that'll be for sale there and also a bunch of prints uh hopefully i'll have some new prints i haven't used my printer in a while i need to make sure that it, it still works that the 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 cartridges aren't all clogged up and and junk like that but um yeah go check that out um and if you if you aren't in arlington texas or anywhere near there you know, just follow follow the instagram page uh at the demon jackal for that kind of stuff um so uh that's it uh let me know what you thought about these episodes of nxt and nxt uk by tweeting me at tiw podcast go to tiwpodcast.com for more reviews if you enjoyed this episode or anything else on the site please share some links with your friends subscribe on itunes spotify stitcher youtube wherever you like to listen and i'll be back real soon uh talking about next week's episode of monday night raw um and at some point i gotta i gotta do the spider-man far from home spoiler episode because it's so good go go see it go see spider-man it's awesome um 
All right, that's it. Thanks for listening. Stay safe out there in all the infinite multiverses. I'll see you next time here on TIW Podcast. Bye.